Nope. Hello, dear listener. Thank you for joining me in this week's video. As many of you know, this Saturday is May 5th, or what many people recognize as Cinco de Mayo. Contrary to popular belief, Cinco de Mayo is not Mexico's Independence Day. Instead, it's the annual commemoration of their army's unlikely victory over the French forces of Napoleon III on May 5th, 1862, at the Battle of Puebla. In honor of this holiday, I decided it would be a great opportunity to explore one of Mexico's most chilling urban legends, the Lechuza. The Lechuza are witches, or perhaps spirits, prominent in Hispanic folklore that are notorious for their ability to shapeshift. Stories of the Lechuza span across Mexico and into parts of Texas. According to cryptids, Lechuza are female witches who have sold their souls to the devil in exchange for dark powers. At night, they transform into horrific creatures with a bird's body and a woman's face. Once transformed, they fly throughout the night in search of prey. When a lechuza finds her target, she will perch in a location where she can't easily be seen. They then start to make strange whistling noises or perhaps mock the sound of an infant crying. Those curious enough to seek out the source of the sound risk being grabbed by the lechuza's sharp talons, taken away and devoured. Other versions of the story describe the lechuza as the spirit of a witch who was murdered by locals. Her spirit returns in the form of the bird monster to get revenge. In other tales, the lechuza is the spirit of many vengeful women who have returned from the grave to torment and seek revenge on the living. The following are three alleged encounters with the dreaded Lechuza. Without any further ado, let's begin. Number 1 This experience happened to my uncle in Caralvo, Mexico, around the time my cousin was born in 1988. As he explained it to me, he was coming home from work in Monterey, about an hour drive away. He had left his job site and noticed he was alone walking through the street. He began hearing a whistling sound, as if someone was trying to get his attention. He got to his car and started driving out of the city, but swears now he heard the same whistling noise inside the car. He proceeded to drive home, but was freaked out the whole time, feeling like he was being followed. Along with the whistling, he was also beginning to hear some type of heavy jumping and landing amongst the trees as he drove past them. Once the trees ended and the arid land started, he no longer could see anything around him besides the road, but he still felt the presence of something following him. Now, I feel like I should explain where it was he lived at the time. His home was barely that. Four cylinder block walls held together with cement, with metal sheets for a roof. His restroom and bathtub were separate from the house, as they had plumbing installed afterwards. Now, at around 11 p.m., he arrived home putting aside all the memories of the car ride home, thinking it was all in his head. He walks inside and finds his wife giving their then-infant baby a bath. As he starts to relax and eat, he starts to hear the whistling again. He walks over to my aunt and asks if she can hear it too. She tells him that she doesn't hear anything but does believe in witches and begins to freak out. She is especially scared 
because all the legends surrounding witches describe them as being particularly attracted to babies. She takes her baby in her arms, and as she does, loud footsteps are heard on the ceiling. She runs around trying to get away, but the footsteps keep pounding around, following her with every step. In the midst of the commotion, the footsteps suddenly stop, and my uncle and his wife hear a wicked cackling coming from outside. Just then, all the sounds ceased altogether. Whatever was pursuing them had left, for now. From that point on, the footsteps were heard regularly by my aunt every time she was near her baby. My uncle didn't sleep, fearing that something would happen to him or his family. He would periodically hear the whistling and would want to go out to investigate, but was too worried to actually do so. All night, they sat in terror. The next morning, they looked at the rooftop and found nothing, no scratches, footprints, or any evidence of any banging. And that was the last time they were visited by whatever it was, but he swears it was a lechuza. Number 2 I grew up hearing stories of the lechuza from my grandparents. A lechuza is a woman who sheds her human skin at night to reveal that she's actually a wrinkly monster with hot coals for eyes, or at least that's what they told me. They also told me that this creature often takes the form of an owl, or a fireball, and eats people mostly drunk men. Back when I was in the Girl Scouts, we had a camping trip out in the mountains of Texas. That night, my entire group, all 20 plus of us, were crammed into a tent that was intended for 10 people. As if that wasn't bad enough, it was late June, and if you've been in Texas during the summer, you know how extremely hot it can get. Because it was so hot, I decided to leave the tent and look for the cabin where my parents were sleeping. That was a bad idea. I got lost in the dark. After a while, something began chasing me. I ran as fast as I could, but ended up getting cornered between two large boulders. Whatever this thing was... It glared at me. Its eyes were dimly lit. I probably wouldn't have even noticed the light in the eyes if it wasn't so dark outside. It got really close. Close enough for me to see all of its horrendous details. Before flying away. I ran hysterically back in the direction of my tent and finally found it. I jumped inside, scaring all the other scouts half to death, and began to frantically explain how I was just stalked and almost taken away by a lechuza. None of them believed me, naturally. But the next morning, we all woke up only to find a dozen large feathers in the direction of where I was chased. I know what I saw regardless if anyone believes me or not. Number 3 About a year ago, me, along with two of my friends, we'll call them Ramen and Dennis, were at another friend's house smoking some hookah. At around 11, Ramen went back to his house to go hang out with a girl and told us to meet him there when we were done. We finished at about 1 a.m. and caught an Uber back to Ramen's house. Dennis and I decided to smoke a few bowls before we went inside. Once we finished, we went inside Ramen's house and hung out with him and his girl for about half an hour before she left. When she did, Dennis had the brilliant idea to smoke a little more, this time with Ramen so they followed each other out into the snowy night. Uh, against my better judgment, I decided to go out and stand with them as they smoked up. 
we had only been outside for about five or ten minutes, when Raman whistled three times. This is where things began to get weird, because in order to summon a lechuza, you need to whistle three times at 3 a.m., which is the witching hour. I checked my phone and saw that it was, in fact, 3 a.m. I thought nothing of it, shook my head, and began to laugh at his nonsense. I raised the joint to my lips for another hit, when Raman stopped me in my tracks. He told me to freeze in a very worried voice. We all got silent, and then I heard it. We all heard it. The only way I can describe it is to compare it to a loud, pig-type squealing, but also mixed with some type of growling, and it came from across the street we were standing at. It was way too dark to determine what was making the sound, and naturally, we freaked the hell out and rushed back inside, locking the doors behind us. The whole way back into the house, we heard that noise, whatever it was. Once we were inside, we tried our best to calm down. Despite being so freaked out, we passed out due to sheer exhaustion. When we woke up, we didn't find anything wrong. No scratches at the door, no weird shaped footprints. But we all did recall the same thing in the morning. You're probably thinking it was just some type of weird trip gone wrong due to all the drugs and trust me, I want to believe it's true. But we all heard that noise. We all freaked out. Whatever it was, I think it was real. And I think it was a lechuza. Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed this week's video. If you did, be sure to drop kick that like button down below. Subscribe if you haven't done so already. And if you really love me, cause God knows I love you, turn on the notifications so you can be alerted to all the newest uploads. If you enjoyed this theme and want to continue going down the Mexican themed rabbit hole, check out the other two videos on screen now. One of them is about five alleged Mexican witch encounters and the other is an original story by yours truly. No matter what you decide to do, just remember to stay safe out there. I'll be seeing you in the next video.